that is the worst state you can ever be in questioning yourself questioning your worth like it it makes you feel so worthless it makes you feel like it just makes you feel like you're nothing like oh god i don't want to cry because <laughs> So before we get into this video, I just want you guys to know that things might get a little bit personal. I I might say some things that might be a little bit personal. And the reason as why I'm doing this video is because I believe there is someone out there that needs to see this, that needs to hear this. Someone who needs to know that they are not alone uh, and that it's okay. They will be fine. I have quite a number of friends that have reached out to me and asked me to do this video you know a video about depression and how to handle depression you know and depression is not something to joke about i know it's not given a lot of attention especially in africa uh it's not given enough attention and people really don't care about mental health uh you always have to put on like you always have to be strong depression is not a minor topic it's actually something that is very very serious depression is not just having a bad day it's not just feeling sad and you know feeling um bad about yourself no depression goes way beyond that depression is feeling so unmotivated Feeling like you don't, you're uninterested in the things that once bought you happiness. It's not even having the energy to get out of bed sometimes, you know, failing to eat, failing to do the minor stuff, like the smallest things, the things that people may see as so small, like brushing your teeth, you know, taking a shower, just getting out of bed. Depression is way more than just having a bad day. It's way more than just feeling sad. It's deeper than that. So today I'm going to be telling you guys about my own depression story. I know I may seem to be a happy person, you know. I have everything under control and you know, but it's not always rainbows and butterflies. I, I too have struggled. I have struggled with things and at some point I was depressed. And yeah. I'm opening up to you guys. I'm, I'm actually one person who hates talking about things that are personal. I hate opening up to people about my personal issues. And I know you guys are asking, okay, now why are you talking about it? But you guys should know that this is different because I'm alone in the room and I'm talking to the camera. So it's different from talking to someone like one-on-one -on -one. but also i'm doing this because i have quite a number of friends that are suffering that have mental issues that have reached out to me and you know opened up to me about their depression and how they are struggling mentally and as like you know what how about i make a video about this because i believe it's quite a number of people out there that are actually suffering that are battling depression battling anxiety battling bipolar and you know all that other mental mental stuff and yeah let's get right into this video growing up i've always been the kid that doesn't really open up about you know my issues the things that are bothering me i've always been a kid that puts on a happy face all the time i've always been one that you know helps others in their struggling moments but when it comes to my own like my own hardships and my own uh struggles i i don't know how to like i don't know how to open up i don't know how to express myself i don't know how to help myself get through situations i have always been someone who battles with my own issues on my own if i open up to you just know it has taken a lot for me to even tell you that i'm struggling like i've always been someone who keeps my issues to myself right and that really that really took a toll on me it really took a toll on my mental health because i have suffered a lot of bullying and I didn't really open up to people. I remember the first I remember the first time I felt depressed, like seriously depressed was in my high school. Uh I had this one girl that 
used to bully me like guys when i tell you bully me this girl used to make my life a living hill it started as a friendship like we were friends at first and i don't know what happened but we we kind of grew apart and we stopped being friends and instead of you know moving on with her life and doing her she instead opened up war between me and her <laughs> it was a war between me and her and for those who know me i am actually a very reserved person i am a quiet person i am not someone who i'm not someone who is so loud and someone who will I, I, i'm naturally a quiet person you know i would just be in class seated and all of a sudden i hear stuff being thrown at me you know and she used to spread these rumors about me and guys all these things like it was a series of things and all that all those things made me depressed like it made me hate school it made me i dreaded the idea of just going to class like i wanted to drop out of school i basically wanted to drop out of school and up to this day i don't know if it's the trauma but up to today i'm one person who hates school and <laughs> um my dad always tells me to go back and upgrade but uh, I think it's a series of things like the trauma. I think I have trauma. School really traumatized me and I'm one person who doesn't. I don't want anything to do with school. Like, I don't know, maybe in future I might go back and upgrade. But the trauma I got from school and that was the beginning of de my depression. That was the beginning. That was, that was the start. That's when I... I, f I began feeling depressed. Like all those things I went through, you know, the bullying, the teasing I went through in school, it made me depressed. It, it led to my depression. So after high school, I joined campus, right? And my campus life wasn't that bad because I had actually grown. I knew how to stand up for myself more. I knew how to defend myself like as more outspoken. I just wouldn't let someone, you know, come and tease me and bully me around, you know. So I actually began feeling a little more confident. And guys, I'm also one person that has always had confidence issues. Like I have always struggled with my confidence i have always cared so much about what people think of me and i think that is one thing that actually that is one thing that is one disaster that will actually tear you down thinking caring about what people think of you and trying to please everyone like i'm one person that has always struggled with my confidence so when i joined campus i actually began feeling a little more confident i began being more outspoken i knew how to defend myself more right so i felt like i was actually gaining my life back like i was beginning to know who i am and i was beginning to feel uh seen i should say <laughs> i was beginning to feel more of me more of me right so uh, i got into this relationship right and when I got into this relationship, I felt like I had got a meaning in my life. Like I, I had something that I would look up to. Like I had something that got me excited. I felt I had, I had something that I would wake up to. Now I had got someone that added meaning in my life, right? And that is one thing I don't want to do ever again is making someone the center of your happiness making someone define you making someone um like feeling like you have to depend on someone for happiness for joy and you know that's one mistake i did and i don't ever want to be in that place again because when that relationship went downhill <sighs> guys <laughs> it was like my whole life had been drained out of me like i i lost um i lost my life lost meaning i was so unmotivated i dreaded uh going to for lectures anymore like i felt so small i actually got depressed once again um 
I felt I didn't have anything to look up to anymore. Like, I always questioned myself, like, am I that bad? Why is it that everyone keeps on leaving me? Why is it that nothing ever works out? Why is it that, like, am I a bad person? Am I that bad? And guys, that is the worst state you can ever be in. Questioning yourself, questioning your worth. Like, it's... It makes you feel so worthless. It makes you feel like... It just makes you feel like you're nothing. Like, oh God, I don't want to cry. Because <laughs> just talking about these things makes me so emotional. Because it has really taken a lot for me to pull myself out of that state. And... Just talking about it, like, it triggers me. It triggers trauma. It triggers memories. But, yeah. Anyways, guys. So, uh, after campus, remember, I had just gone through a heartbreak. And I was so depressed. Like, I was so depressed. I remember I had one friend of mine that I used to talk to always. Because she was also going through a breakup, actually, at that time. So, we used to console each other. But I felt like no one really understood what i was going through however much i used to tell her like i feel like this and this like i just want to cry like i thought she really didn't understand like no form of words could really express could really let her understand how i really felt like it was it was something that i thought no one could understand like i felt so demotivated i didn't want to get out of bed like the only thing that would make me happy would be that person like my ex calling me and you know talking to me like that's the only thing that would actually make me happy like i didn't want to do the things that i once found like interesting i distanced myself from most people you know i felt like no one really understood me and trust me if you're going through that I understand you baby girl i understand you dude like i understand you and i just want you to know that this too shall pass this too shall pass no situation is permanent and in years to come you look back at this situation and even laugh because you'll see how far you've come you you'll give yourself gratitude for how far you've come and how you handled that situation so well and you'll be proud of yourself for where you are now so uh after that happened like as i was still nursing my heartbreak uh you know now as from school and i had entered the the working world like i had to actually go out there and you know begin a life begin working and you know i was still at my father's place Keep in mind, I'm at my father's place. I'm just from school. I'm dealing with this heartbreak. Like, I'm a miss. I'm totally a miss, basically, right? Life had got real, and I knew I just couldn't sit at home and, you know, cry all day. I had to go out there and, you know, look for a job and start a life, you know? <laughs> I went out and I looked for a job, and I actually got this one job. When I got this job, I felt like I got something that would bring life back into me i had got a purpose in my life um uh, i thought i got something that would actually distract me from my heartbreak and distract me from my depression i i i thought this was something that thing that i was going to look forward to and i decided that i was going to focus on my work i was going to focus on my job and i didn't i didn't want anything to do with you know relationships or anything because baby they had taken a toll on me they had <laughs> they had taken a toll on me i hated relationships i didn't want uh, as just a bitter soul as so bitter i hated everything like the only thing i wanted to do was go to work and you know get my money and go home and you know yeah that's all i i always looked forward to so, you know i was excited to get that job and you know for the first time in a long time i felt so happy i felt i had purpose in my life i went back home and i remember that day i had a very long chat with my dad you know he was so happy for me but the only issue was that 
the job was posting me in a different region of the country not where i had grown up from but at the back of my mind i really didn't care because the only thing i was looking at at that time was getting that job and making my money like i just wanted something that would make me feel alive something that would give me purpose and i thought this job would do that for me i thought this job would complete me i thought i thought this job would actually help me forget about my heartbreak and my depression you know <laughs> so i i really didn't care being posted in whatever part of the country as just as just ready for anything right and yeah i was so happy my dad was so happy for me and I remember going for that job, you know, going to that part of the country. When I was there, I actually made a lot of friends. Like, I got to know a lot of people. And for the first time in a long time, I felt happy. Like, I genuinely felt happy again. Because, guys, my life, I had overdrawn myself in thoughts. I had overdrawn myself in, you know, my heartbreak and all this depression. And I had forgotten what happiness felt like. But when I went, like, when I went to that part of the country for that job, I met quite a number of people. And I actually felt alive again. Like, I felt happy, like, genuinely happy. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, this is it. Like, who knew this would even happen? Who knew I would even forget, you know? I would even forget about my ex and, you know, begin a new life. Who knew I would even feel happy again? <laughs> and it so happened that I met someone. I met someone new. Now, when I met this new person, it actually helped me get over the heartbreak faster, like my previous heartbreak. Like, I met this new person and I actually got over the heartbreak, like, as happy again, you know, as in a new relationship. And the person was making me happy. And, you know, I thought this was it. I thought, okay, this is the love of my life. I'm going to get married, have kids, and, you know, life is going to be great. <laughs> Oh my god, so young, so silly. And yeah, you know, time passed, you know, I'm working, I'm happy, I'm in this relationship, and yeah, I'm living life basically. And boom, boom, <sighs> just like I told you guys, <laughs> it's not orange roses and butterflies and rainbows. Uh, that relationship too, like the new relationship I had got into, it also began going downhill and the cycle began all over again. Like, <sighs> came back once again. I had to restart the entire cycle because that relationship too, I don't want to go so much into details because, you know, I've healed from it and I don't want to visit my past so much. So I won't really go into details, but just know that relationship didn't work as well and when i tell you that relationship too drained me like that heartbreak oh god that heartbreak was real i think that is one of the longest heartbreaks i have taken long to get over because <laughs> it's something that brought me joy like it's something that brought me joy like it's a relationship that brought me joy and it's a relationship that i thought was going to last and it's one that made me forget like my heartbreak and my depression so when it was taken away from me like when it ended i felt like okay now now what else what more for me what more for me like i'm basically like this is the end like what more can i do like this is it like i'm now i'm now useless basically and it so happened that that by the time by the time that relationship like came crumbling i had also begun getting issues like at my workplace like they had basically like my job wanted to lay off some workers and i so happened to be among the people that were getting laid off so you can only imagine relationship down work down like <laughs> so i was basically thinking okay the only thing that brought me joy was my job and this relationship and now that they are all basically gone what more for me like guys this is when i seriously got depressed like serious depression i don't know if you guys can i don't know if i can even put it in words because 
I used to go out and by the way, depression is not always like someone who is sad and crying and you know so quiet no actually as one person who was always laughing like i would always go out and people would always see this happy face people would always see me i would actually create videos because i've always been someone who loves uh, making videos and you know creating some skits so i would always make my videos and i always looked so happy in my videos like i always, I always looked happy when people saw me like when i got out of the house i would always put on this happy face and you know be very vibrant but i alone knew what i was going through i alone knew how bad i felt i alone knew how much i would cry at night how much i would cry myself to sleep at night when no one was seeing like no one really knew that i was depressed it was only me and i really can't put it in words how i felt but at this time i was now seriously depressed like serious depression because everything i i looked up to everything i loved had been taken away from me like my relationship like my job and i was thinking okay now i'm going back home my father like was so happy that i was out there working and now i'm just going back home and sitting at home and you know not having a job just sitting there like <laughs> I don't know if you guys can get the feeling like so uh of course i had to transfer back to my hometown and yeah now at this time as nursing a heartbreak from the relationship and i was also nursing a heartbreak from losing my job two in one <laughs> and i went home i didn't want like i didn't want my father to know that i had lost my job because my father is one person that is so emotional and i knew it would break his heart i knew telling him that i no longer had a job would actually break him and I didn't want him to like cry or break down because that would actually even make me feel worse you know i'm already going through it and him and seeing him go through like that pain would actually make me even feel worse so i decided that i wasn't going to actually tell him that i had lost my job i remember going back home with all my stuff <laughs> and he looked at me and he's like what like why are you back like what's up like what has happened and i remember lying to him i told him and no i've just been transferred back to kampala i'm going to be working from here now like i'm going to be working from my home district so that's why i came back with each and everything and i could see that he wasn't convinced but you know he just he just let it pass so now i had this pressure of you know showing my dad that i actually still have a job and i'm still working and i had to always get up in the morning and pretend that i'm going to work <laughs> i had to get up in the morning and pretend that i'm actually going to work so that my dad like didn't find so that my dad like didn't question like why i'm just seated at home right so i would always get up in the morning and actually go and you know drop my cvs in different places but i would actually tell my dad that i'm going to work right and time reached and i felt i couldn't keep up like because there are times when i had actually exhausted all the money like all my savings in transport you know and i couldn't keep up like i couldn't keep on like lying to my dad that i'm going to work when i didn't even have money like a time reached when i didn't even have money anymore so i decided that i was going to leave home like i was basically going to leave home and yeah go start my life i i don't know why i thought of leaving home but that's one thing that came into my mind because you know when you're at home as becoming more and more angry like as angry at the world as becoming irritable like any small thing could annoy me because i felt like i felt like everything was just like nothing was actually making sense my life wasn't making sense and i didn't want to put pressure like i didn't want to hurt the people around me so i thought it was better to go and stay on my own and you know handle my issues on my own without 
burdening those around me you know without burdening my family like i told you guys i've always been one person who likes like handling my own issues like i don't easily open up to people so i decided that i'm going to move out of my father's home and go rent <laughs> but keep in mind i want to go and rent move out of my father's house but i don't have a job i don't even know whether i'm going to get a job in the next coming months you know i'm just basically living on faith i'm <laughs> i'm living on faith basically and i remember i had some little savings like some little savings on my account and i got that money and i went and i rented a house for three months i rented i i i paid that three months down payment on that house and i oh god <laughs> reality hit when i moved out of my father's house because now i didn't have a i didn't have a job i i didn't have like savings i had spent all my savings in you know paying for the house i had spent my savings in you know going out there to drop cvs and all that guys when i tell you life got real life hit my ass like hey <laughs> i remember i just had one mattress like this and my case of clothes that's all that's all that was in my house but i still used to you know record my videos and put on this happy face and actually no one knew that i was struggling no one because i always used to portray this happy person no one even knew that i was crying myself to sleep no one knew that i was even struggling to have something to eat no one knew that sometimes i would sleep on an empty stomach like it was just a lot that was going on in my life and at that time i remember i thought of suicide i thought of a lot of things guys when i tell you depression is not something to joke about depression is real depression is real and that was the time i've forgotten to tell you guys the time that my father actually got a health condition like he suffered a stroke uh, i actually thank god that he's actually very in a in a fine in a better state now but yeah that too that too took a toll on my mental health that too uh, made me like it made me break down and i felt like the people like the people i thought would actually be there for me like you know when you have friends like you know i'm one person who is always reaching out to people and always like trying to make sure that people are fine checking up on people but when that situation happened i felt like i didn't get that same energy back like very few people reached out to me even the people i thought were my friends like my close friends like they didn't even bother to check on me to see how how i was doing like how i was holding up like i just felt like they didn't care you know and <laughs> that's that actually made me even more depressed like i thought i didn't like i didn't have a strong support system so as going through all these things like on my own like my father's self i had lost my job i i was renting i didn't have money like all these things and i felt no one really understood me i felt and that's why i actually cut off so many people like i cut off so many people after that situation because i felt like if you're my friend like if you say you're my friend and i go through a major like like i go through something like so traumatic like that and you don't even bother to reach out you don't even bother to check on me but you expect me to always check on you like it just didn't make sense to me and that's when i knew i actually had to cut off most people and you know review my circle and yeah uh anyway guys uh long story short all those like all those series of events like they made me get so depressed like it they actually put me in a very deep depression like i know right now when i'm talking you may i may seem like i'm so happy and so fine but trust me 
uh depression doesn't have a face like someone can be smiling someone can be happy but they are severely depressed so we just have to learn to be kind like you don't know what people are going through you don't know what someone is hiding behind that smile like you don't know the battles someone is going through so you just have to be kind because everyone has something they are fighting everyone has something they are battling with so just be kind and always reach out to your friends like those ones that seem so strong you know the friends that are always reaching out that to you the friends that are always checking up on you the, the ones that seem like they got everything together those are the ones that actually struggle the most those are the ones that actually suffer the most with depression always be kind to your friends and always check out on your friends uh i know this video is getting a bit lengthy but i wanted to tell you guys some of the things i did like to help me overcome my depression uh first of all uh get out of the house you should get out of that house i know it takes a lot like it's too much work even just the idea of getting out of bed can be so draining like you feel you just can't but do all it takes like drag yourself out of that bed take a shower and go out there like just get out of the house because the more you cocoon yourself in your house like you begin getting all these negative thoughts these suicidal thoughts like you begin thinking the worst like trust me you begin thinking like no one loves you everybody hates you and you just need to you know maybe i don't want to say that word but you begin getting all those suicidal thoughts and those negative thoughts in your head and those will actually even make the situation worse so in case you feel depressed like in case you ever get into that situation always try your best to just get out of the house and you know when you you when you're with people when you interact with people it helps you like it just makes you feel a little bit better like it just takes a little weight off of your shoulder just a little bit i know it won't completely make you feel you know happy but you just feel some bit of relief also another thing i would advise is that you talk to someone like talk about your depression talk about your feelings i know it's hard especially in this in this um society that we live in people have this stigma towards like mental issues like when people when, when you say you're depressed most people may think you're just trying to you know get attention and you know you're just being dramatic so it gets a little bit hard for us to open up like for people to open up but even if you can't like you don't have someone to talk to and genuinely open up to you can just write you can just like write it down like you can just write your feelings down like it will help you like you can just write like your feelings down like one time you look back and read through them and you see how far you've come you'll see the progress you've made so in case you, you don't have someone to talk to because i know even therapy can be a little bit expensive therapy is quite expensive but if you don't have anyone to talk to if you don't have a therapist at least write your feelings down like meditate you can also meditate you know just record you can just record talking about it like the way i'm doing like you can just record a video talking about your feelings you don't necessarily need to put it out there but you can it just it will just help you like you feel like you're actually talking to someone like you're saying your feelings out right and also another thing i would greatly advise is that you cut off social media like just delete social media i know now this is so hard and most of you will disagree most of you will be like but i can't live without my phone like it's the only thing that distracts me i know i know it's hard but trust me social media is one of the most depressing <laughs> social media is one of the most cause of depression trust me uh when you log on social media even if you say uh me i don't compare myself to others why is it that every time you finish scrolling on social media like when you turn off that that app you feel like like you feel like crap you basically feel like crap because you feel like 
people are out there like living their life and you're just there stagnant like it just makes you compare your life like it makes you compare yourself to others little do you know that people never publish like their lows everyone is just publishing their highs you know their achievements but you don't know what they are hiding behind those you know uh those trips to dubai you don't know what people are hiding you don't know you don't know the price they are paying for all that so if you feel you're one person that is always comparing yourself and social media makes you feel that pressure i would advise that you delete social media you can come back after some time but for the sake of your mental health you can delete social media for some time trust me this will make you feel so much better and also just take it day by day like just take it day by day i won't tell you to you know do something you love go out there and do what you love because when you're depressed what most people don't know is that when you're depressed even the things that you love become hectic to do like you just feel it's it's too much doing the things that you once actually loved they just become so hectic so most people will tell you go out there and do, and do your hobbies do the things you love but that is not being realistic because a person that is actually depressed can't even do the things they once loved to do like it's just it's just so hard so i would just advise that you take every day as it comes like just take it day by day cry if you must like cry yourself out feel your emotions and whatever you're feeling and know that this is not the end of the world know that you're not alone there are so many people out there that are hustling and they're struggling and just know that one day this too shall come to pass and one day you'll look back at this situation and laugh because of how far you've come like you didn't even know you could get that far but you did it and you're in a much better place and also i'm sending peace and love and light to whoever is going through anything i may not know you but trust me i understand you i know what you're going through because i've been there trust me i've been there you'll feel better this too shall come to pass and you're not alone